Uh, we'll uh, go fourth row left, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Uh, I'll just, just follow up with the same question I asked Brian, I guess, in some ways. But as, as you look at that cornerback position, what do you feel like you, this defense needs to accomplish during this week uh, heading into another week of game? Is there something specific about this week that you can do to help Denzel and Cam and those other guys just raise that level of play? Yeah, Coach mentioned it. You, you want to make practice as game-like as possible. We have the best receiving core in the country so you have to balance that's what coach day does a great job of balance how many reps to get um, we'd like as many reps as possible I mean I would but you know there's got to be a limit because you want to avoid injury and all that too but you know creating as many competitive situations as we can for those guys so that they can get better but, you know, ultimately their production on game day is my responsibility, right? So if um, they're, if we're taking shots at that position, I have to look at myself too and say, well, are we uh, showing our hand too much? You know, um, are we giving, am I giving those guys every chance to be successful through disguise and coverage variation? So, you know, that's my responsibility and something uh, deep right field, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Jim, when you, when you look at the way the defensive line is playing, how much can they contribute to help the cornerback is going through uh, in, the, in the back end of the year? It seems like <coughs> if you have a better defensive line, obviously, that it helps the corners out, but the way they're playing, they're obviously going to help. Yeah, so, you know, I say coverage and rush, they, they defense responds working together. So it's a it's a group effort, and um, you know our, our our front is productive and strong and attacking and you know confident, <coughs> and that helps the coverage. And, and it, it, it's all working together, right? It's my job to make sure that that quarterback holds the ball for that extra split second, um, he, so that he can't be decisive about the coverage that we're in, and that leads to more production up front, and it's better. As much as we can keep those guys going and fresh and attacking the line of scrimmage and the quarterback, uh, our coverage will continue to be better. Fourth or right, Cameron T. Robinson, The Athletic. Jim, kind of off that, with how good the defensive line is playing, I mean, I think against Michigan State, you were able to rush for a decent amount and still get pressure. How does that change kind of your mentality as a play caller decide, oh, I want to blitz here, this guy's a blitzer, or play coverage with how well those safeties are? Yeah, it's everything, right? If you're if you're creating pressure without um, bringing extra guys into the mix, then it gives you a lot more options in terms of the coverage and, look, and looks and things that you're able to do at the line of scrimmage, pre-snap and post-snap. You know, so um, as the competition gets um, more intense, you know, we need to be able to have the ability to bring pressure to add guys into the rush. And, and you've seen it a little bit, but we have a, a much larger arsenal, I guess, than we have um, displayed because our front is doing they're doing a, a great job of, of getting that pressure on the quarterback without bringing extra guys. Right next door, Tony Gerben, Buckeye Huddle. Jim, I think a lot of college safeties would just be getting backed up from a broken leg in the Rose Bowl. Given how late the ransom has played, to this point, how surprised are you that he has done so well and just how well is he playing right now? Yeah, I mean, everything that Lathan does on the field is a bonus in my mind because we did not have, like, I, from the time I arrived, I didn't have him out there. And he just shows up. You know, he's, he's the guy that jumps off the video. He's the guy that during the game as I'm watching it from my vantage point, shows up in all the right places and he's decisive. So credit to him and he's, he's, he, he loves to play football and I think uh, you know, for a guy to come back from that significant injury is, is really a, a good story to tell. Uh, right in front of him, Doug Maurice, Cleveland.com. 
Jim, what is your process when deciding um, how many reps a guy is going to get in the game between the position coach, yourself, maybe even Ryan is involved in that? How do you work that out and sort of who has the greatest say there? And then whenever you're maybe thinking about starting somebody new at a position, how serious of a, of a decision is that? Is it just, hey, the guy who can help us win the most is who's going to play? Or is there any hesitation of maybe taking a guy out of the starting lineup and putting somebody new in? I think it's always a, a um, you have to know your players, you know, and, and if a guy's battling for a position and it's back and forth and, and um, you know, not that much needs to be said. Those kind of battles, they happen, you know. One guy's on the rise, but, you know, just playing better. But I think if it's a drastic change, you have to make sure that, you know, we do, you know, that the players are aware of it, parents, the whole group, everybody, um, from coach day on down, we're, we're very sensitive to that, to make sure that, because guys put a lot of work in, into this life that they lead, so it's our job to be up front with them. So different situations, right? I mean, if it's a close battle back and forth, week to week, you know, not much needs to be said. Um, when it comes to reps, yeah, I think, you know, most of the time that comes to the that goes to the position coach. I mean, that's ultimately a position coach's responsibility, but Coach Day will weigh in or I'll weigh in if, if we think there's a, there's a need to. But I mean, our, we have a lot of great coaches, so they really manage that. When you create a group of like, these guys are game ready. You know, that's like, these guys are game ready. And that's what we talk about, who's game ready. You know, once a guy is deemed game ready, then really it becomes up to the position coach how they rotate it back and forth. Front row middle, Dave Biddle, 24-7 sports. Jim, halfway through the regular season, you guys are ranked seventh in the country in total defense. What's maybe one thing you're really happy about with your defense and maybe one thing that you're like, we've got to get better at this? Yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with um, where we're at in uh, the run game. Um, we can be better, but I, I'm just pleased in, in – the way we're fitting things and the way that um, we're playing fast. Guys seem to know the scheme and where they fit and where the ball's gonna come out, you know, and you just, you feel good about um, not getting creased, you know, guys are in the right places, which is always important, particularly with a new scheme. And then, you know, we, uh, third downs, right? I'm, I'm pleased with that, you know, I think in both the run game and third downs, we still have more that we can do. You know, we're we're just starting to approach the level that we want to be at, but there's more that we can do in those two areas. And then we, yeah, you know, we got to be better at those 50-50 balls. I mean, that's just the reality of playing defense is um, you can play great all game and they can just toss a couple up in the air and if you don't win them, you know, you give up a couple touchdowns. And, that's the game we play, but we want to get better in that area. Front row middle, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, uh, Mike Ball Jr. had two and a half sacks. I think it only seven snaps. Um, first of all, how, how good is he? What's it like to have him on your uh, your defense? And, and why only seven snaps? Well, you know, he's coming off an injury. He's battling injuries. He's fighting his way back, you know. Um, Mike loves to play, so, you know, he comes in and practice and maybe – you know, doesn't re-injure or doesn't feel great and then has to back off. So it's like a, a push-pull kind of thing. You're trying to get him those reps during the week. So we just thought it would be a good idea to ease him back into the lineup someplace where he can just be aggressive, you know, and, and um, play fast. And, you know, that was the plan. His production for seven plays is exceptional. You know, obviously we'd like to play him more, and he will as he gets healthier. But that was definitely the plan this week, and it worked out well. Right next door, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Jim, you mentioned, uh, at least with Tommy, the way he, he picked up the defense in the middle linebacker spot was, was really advanced for, for, for somebody who's coached. Um, Steele's the other guy starting with him and somebody who didn't collect a ton at, at, at the position until, until last year. What do you think of the way he was able to, to learn stuff this offseason and, and take it to the field through six games? Yeah, Steele is, um, he make, he's, 
just making continual progress all the time. Um, smart, you know, enjoys playing, um, has picked things up well. You know, I think what you're seeing in, in, in Tommy is advanced. You know, I think he's 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 really uh, kind of not the norm, but still, still has uh, picked it up at a, at a a sound pace and, and, and has become more and more productive as as the weeks have gone on. Uh, third row uh, left, Dan Hope, Eleven Warriors. Jim, I know you talked a lot before season about how you know installing kind of ramped that up over the course of the off season. Is there more stuff that you look to install this week during my week? You know, um, there are things that we've installed that we have not shown yet. So, you know, that's we do that. I do that as I kind of think weeks <coughs> in advance. So we want to be able to. I don't. I, I don't think it's best if you install something that week and put it in the game. I mean, sometimes you need to do that, but I'd much rather think ahead and we've put things in now that you'll see in the upcoming week. So we'll continue that in the bye week. I don't, I don't think it'll be like, hey, let's download some more during this week because it's the bye week. But we try to stay a few weeks in advance. I do with my thinking. So we'll just continue at the same pace. You know, it's working, and, and, I, and I definitely don't want to put more on the players. Uh, right in front of him, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Just to follow up on what Doug was asking you a little bit. With, with Lathan and, and Josh specifically, I know you guys are teaching them everything, but everybody's natural skill sets are different. Uh, can you just talk about the difference between what Lathan brings to that safety spot versus what Josh brings to that safety spot? Doug, I know he shows up in the game. Yeah. I feel like um, Lathan has uh, some versatility in between the adjuster and the bandit uh, position. I think he he seems to be a guy who can be both strong side, weak side, um, fit the run pass, see, see the concepts, um, maybe in, in a broader spectrum. Um, Josh is, is, I mean, I think he's really good when he has um, a specific assignment and direction and is able to really just unleash and play fast. So um, Lathan plays Bandit and, and he can do that from a physical standpoint, but I think he also um, thinks and sees the game like an adjuster, more like Ronnie does, so that more versatility. Fourth row left, Jacob Bench, the Lantern. Steel is a, always a positive player, right? I guess um, that's his contribution from a leadership or mentality standpoint. He is a guy who, who doesn't let um, one play bleed into the next. You know, if it didn't go well, he brings that attitude of you know, next play attitude and and vision towards being our best, you know, rather than looking back when things don't go quite as well. And I think that, that helps him in his own game. You know, um, you know, even during practice, you know, when I try to be hard on him, he's developed a, uh, a great mentality of just always looking forward. And I think that's, you know, you, you want that in, in all your players. And sometimes we try to test them at practice to put them into that mode um, so they can block it out when the time comes. And he, he brings that to the defense. Deep left, Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes now in Sports Illustrated. Hey Jim, you, you've made it really clear with us how high your standards are. You guys are playing opposite of an offense that has exceeded at extremely high levels, whether it's in practice or on film, you sense that your defense plays with a certain level of freedom, knowing that the offense is going to score most times 40 plus points a game. I mean, 
is it, does that help them play with a certain freedom or a certain aggression? It's tough for me to answer. I mean, it'd be a good question for them, for our players, because I don't, I don't really, I've never talked to them about that because I kind of, uh, it's my job to push the opposite. It's my job to, to um, prepare them. You know, we talk about making a stop on that play, on that series, uh, no matter what the score is. And I have to drive that point home, you know, for when and if there's a time where it becomes more competitive. You know, I, I don't think that's something that a defense can just turn on all of a sudden and say, oh, we're, we're in a close game. You know, we better pick it up. I, I don't think that's the way you create um, great defense. So I'm on them all the time, regardless of the score. Um, but it'd be a good question for them. You know, I would think if I was a player, it certainly, it certainly helps, you know, because our offense does, does so well. But I try to I try to get them to just think about that series, no matter what the score is. Second row right, Bill Landis, rivals. Jim, um, these these fifty fifty catch situations. I know sometimes the guy just makes the play. That might happen on the January touchdown there. <coughs> the nice catch by him. Um, outside of those plays where the offensive guy just makes a good play, what, what do you think is, is missing in those moments for, for your guys? Whether it's I don't know, getting your head around or physicalities. What, what are you harping on in those situations? You know, we talk a lot about winning at the line of scrimmage. I think when you go back to um, some of the plays that haven't gone in our favor, you have to look back to the start of the play and if we're in press coverage and to make sure that we're um, throwing our best punch at the line of scrimmage, you know, because that helps the route uh, down the road. And then, yeah, you know, it's all about um, where are you at on the field, what you're, you know, inside, outside, close to the sideline, close to the hash mark. You know, there are all kinds of coaching points that you can give. And, um, you know, it comes down to fitting what the player does best with the techniques. There are a lot of techniques, and um, our coaches are on top of all of them. But you have to kind of melt what's best for the player uh, with the, combined with the technique. And, you know, also the play call. Like I said, you know, people, you can um, talk about uh, not making the play on the 50-50 ball, but you have to say, I have to say, you guys don't have to if you don't want to, but I have to say, <laughs> I have to say, hey, what, you know, why is this guy incurring so many shots, right? I mean, why, you know, you know, how do I need to uh, disguise things better, change things up differently? So that doesn't happen. So offenses don't feel that, that they can do that. So I have to look back on uh, at myself. So it's not just um, that split second at the top of the route. You know, it's football. There's a lot that goes into it, and, and practicing, and you know, winning at the beginning of the play, throwing punches, and then the play call, and what's the quarterback seeing? What's the offensive coordinator seeing? You know, am I creating the best situation uh, for that guy to be successful? Got time for two more. Front row right, Austin Ward, rivals. Jim, when you go back to uh, that conversation with Lathan and Proc, is that one of the week by week, game by game battles that you're talking about that's ongoing, or was there something maybe specific to Michigan State that made Lathan, Lathan, sorry, a better fit for that one? Yeah, it's 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 week to week, right? I mean, again, we we. Um, deem them both to be game ready. Um, there's a lot that goes on during the week that you guys don't see, like who's banged up, who's who's practicing more, you know, guys a lot of times playing the games, but maybe they didn't practice quite as much or at, at the high speed of intensity because they were banged up during the week. So that that all goes into it uh, week by week, but they're both they're both game ready. And right next door, Tim May, Letterman Row. Uh, this may sound a little goofy question, but I, I think a lot of the guys on your front four are playing extremely well in that rotation stuff. But has Mike Hall become sort of that, oh no, not that guy guy? You know, when you see him going to game and stuff with the effort he has shown, uh, obviously Saturday in seven plays, he put on an almost clinic of how to terrorize a quarterback. I mean, th is it important to have a guy like that? I mean, that 
you say, oh, no, guy, when the other team looks at yeah, him. Yeah, the other team looks at him. Oh, no, guy. I, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. But um, that's a good question for Coach Jay. I think he's up next. But, I mean, yeah. I, I like to see Mike in there, yeah, because I know yeah. that, that for me it's the OES guy, right? Because I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, Mike's, Mike's ready to go. Now that means any uh, one-on-one matchups that we create yeah. through bluffs and different, you know, to, to get in one-on-one or the games that Coach Jay calls and things, that means that the, the probability for success is going to be high, which then goes back to, hey, helping our corners, like we said, in different disguises and things. So he does change the game for us, for sure. Coach, thank, thank you man. very much. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.